We do know that bees are sensitive to magnetic fields. We know that within their bodies they contain particles of, of magnetite and laboratory studies have shown that they are indeed sensitive to magnetic fields and you can sh demonstrate in a in, in laboratory that if you artificially create a magnetic field you can control the way that they build their comb and it seems logical that bees are using magnetic fields in navigation. The delicate balance of life on Earth is perfectly illustrated by reliance on bees and their pollination of plants. It's hypothesized that without bees, life wouldn't stand much of a chance. Insect pollination is needed for really all the things that make eating interesting. So all the fruits, the nuts uh, and uh, things like that all require insect pollination and bees are the most important group of pollinators. bees weren't here, if we'd, the bees, we'd have a very boring diet. Yes, we, we would have a very thin existence, I think that's the point, without bees. And of course, as well as the food that we need to eat, uh, they're pollinating wild plants as well. And in many cases, we don't know details about the pollination of, of wild plants, but we can be sure that without bees to pollinate them, many of our wild plants would disappear. Frazier, the Senior Extension Associate for Beekeeping at Pennsylvania State University. What are the classic criteria of colony collapse disorder so that any beekeeper can go out there and look at their bees and say, this looks like a pretty classic case of this? The symptoms are that the bees are relatively healthy and strong, and in a very short period of time, the adult bee population disappears from the colony, it leaves the colony. And what it leaves behind is a lot of brood, meaning the young bees, honey and pollen. On what continents has this uh, colony collapse disorder been observed? Well, the decline of honeybees has occurred actually um, worldwide. We've seen many other countries report declines in honeybees, whether or not it's truly due to this thing called colony collapse disorder, which is a pretty unique set of uh, criteria, is another question. And that's one of the things we're trying to understand by trying to communicate with other people in other parts of the world. The sort of current concern particularly dates from about 2006, and particularly in the United States, where a lot of commercial beekeepers suddenly found that their bees had been healthy at one point in the year and then in late summer just suffered these spectacular losses and, and they appeared to be different from anything that had been seen before. So people were just going to their hives and finding there were no bees at all. Colony collapse disorder has affected hives all around the world, with some countries reporting losses of up to 70%. A variety of reasons have been offered as to its cause but none of them have been able to conclusively explain why all of a sudden bees don't return to their hives. Apart from one, a sensational piece of research by Joseph Kuhn and his team. In an experiment, the doctor worked with eight beehives and placed a regular home deck phone inside half of them. The scientists then monitored if the presence of a deck phone would affect the way that bees returned to their hive. The results were astonishing. In the hives where no deck foam was present, the bees returned at a normal rate. But in the hives which contained a deck foam, the bees hardly returned at all. In one hive containing a deck foam, not a single bee returned. To fully understand the relevance of Dr. Kun's experiment, we must first understand how a deck foam works. The reason you are able to walk around your home talking on your deck foam is because the base station of the deck phone sends electromagnetic frequency waves called microwaves to the handset. This is exactly the same way that a mobile phone mast 
communicates with a mobile phone. A deck phone is basically a miniature version of a mobile phone mast. If a beer is affected by what comes out of a deck phone, it will most definitely be affected by what comes out of a mobile phone mast. And with 4 billion mobile phone users around the world, all of a sudden, there are an awful lot of mobile phone masts. The bee's magnetic sense allows it to navigate using the magnetic lines of the Earth, an ability it has spent millions of years fine-tuning and developing. Does it stand to reason, then, that such an acute sensitivity would be affected by even the slightest change in the electromagnetic environment? So what about a gargantuan change, and one which has happened almost overnight? Are there other species that have this sensitivity to magnetic fields? A sensitivity which ultimately makes them vulnerable to man-made frequencies. Unfortunately, the discovery of a new protein cell called a cryptochrome suggests all life has a magnetic sense. They were discovered in the 1990s in plants where their function is to absorb blue light uh, which is used to regulate growth. They were since been found in insects, animals, mammals, including humans, and in birds. Cryptochromes are a biological molecule called a protein. It's generated by some of your genes called trigenes. And the cryptochrome molecule actually controls your circadian rhythms, including melatonin production. Some of the cryptochromes seem to have a function of absorbing light uh, as detectors for the circadian clock. So they are inputs for the light-dark cycle uh, that many species seem to have, um, plants as well as animals. But in the year 2000, Thorsten Ritz demonstrated an even more amazing role for the cryptochrome. In a series of experiments on robins, he demonstrated that their navigational sense was not only a magnetic one, but it came directly from the cryptochrome cells, which are located behind the eye. I think the Ritz paper published in 2000 is one of those milestones in science because he proposed that this cryptochrome molecule, which remember is best known for its effect in controlling circadian rhythms, that that molecule was actually responsible for giving the compass, magnetic compass information in birds. The birds literally see the Earth's magnetic field, perhaps as a bright or a dark spot superimposed on their field of vision. And as they then move their head or their body around, this spot moves, and so rather like a heads-up display for a fighter pilot, they have this thing that they see, goodness knows what it would be, uh, which allows them to orient uh, while they're flying. The way he tested that was to expose birds to radio frequency fields to see if it actually disturbed their magnetic compass. And not only did the radio frequency field indeed disrupt the uh, migration of robins, but it did so at very, very low intensities of fields. And that, that's really important and really interesting, that very low level radio frequency fields interfered with, this, with, with the robin's compass. The experiments by Ritz clearly demonstrated that the cryptochrome cell used in navigation was seriously affected by man-made frequencies. And man-made frequencies at levels well below those deemed safe by the governing body, ICNRP. All of the animal navigation studies, the um, cockroaches, the zebra finches, the chickens, the robins, they've all had their magnetic compass disturbed 
by radio frequency fields well below the ICNERP public exposure limit. Like work on birds, particularly birds um, and insects, have shown that they are sensitive to fields way below the ICNERP levels that claim are safe for us. If you look at where, where the research shows they're sensitive to, there's good stuff in the literature showing it's significantly lower than what we're allowed to be exposed to and therefore what they're exposed to in the environment. There's certainly solid scientific reason for supposing that magnetic fields, artificial magnetic fields, will disturb the habitat of a number of species. How much has our environment changed because of electromagnetic fields? Because Over of the last 25 years, it's changed beyond recognition. Just beyond recognition. It's millions and millions of times in terms of electromagnetic energy. The former National Radiological Protection Board, uh, in their, one of their documents, said that they thought that the radiation environment, if you like to call it that, had increased many millions of times from what it was 50 years ago. Many millions of times. It's an enormous change in, yeah. in environment on Earth and it completely swamps all these natural signals, including oh. the Schumann waves that we have evolved with. Yeah. 